Hi, honors. I'm Matt Fowder. I'm a graduating senior in the aerospace department with a minor in computer science. Um, my focus area is in research. So I partnered with uh, Professor Carlos Sesnick. Uh, he, he's a professor in the aerospace department. And through his lab, I developed a PID controller to achieve pitch stability for um, one of the scale model aircrafts in his, in his laboratory. And, and that, that's referred to as the, the easy aircraft. Um, and just a little bit of a high level overview before I get into some of the details, uh, just to get into the, the design approach I use, um, the, there are four main ingredients. Uh, the first is I determined a reduced order model from a full order model of the aircraft's dynamics and what exactly those terms mean, I'll get into um, in just a minute. But then second, I uh, developed a, a first guess at the PID's definition and then validated that definition in linear and nonlinear simulation uh, of the aircraft's dynamics. And so to add a little bit of a visual to uh, the topics that I'll be covering, well, first, there is a really great visual here of the aircraft. So this is the scale aircraft in the 5x7 wind tunnel, um, which is really cool. Now, um, to visualize how the controller interacts with this, uh, this aircraft, you can see this. Uh, it's almost like a flow chart um, in control. This is referred to as a block diagram. Um, and information flow basically starts on the left and kind of flows to the right. So um, the reference pitch is the value that uh, the, the user, who are, you know, Professor Sesnick wants this uh, plane to hold. So um, there's a specific pitch that the, 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 the airplane needs to hold. And that is uh, basically compared against a measurement of the aircraft's actual pitch. So that'll give some error. How far is the aircraft from where we want it to be? And then that information is fed to the PID controller, which allows it to basically determine a input uh, to the, the aircraft's dynamics that will hopefully allow the pitch to be, uh, the error to be zeroed out in the pitch to match the, the reference value. Um, and so, uh, getting into the, the ROM and, and the, the reduced order model. So the equations of flight are nonlinear. And to, in order to develop this controller, um, I needed to work in, with linear models. And so um, a linear model of the aircraft's dynamics was provided me. But given the large number of states in the model, uh, there are about 160, um, I ran into numerical issues calculating the transfer function of, of that uh, full order model. So I developed a reduced order model based on the frequency of the structural states in, in that model, those, those 160 states. Um, the actual uh, control system, the actuators, the, the controller um, are band limited to 10 Hertz. So they, they can't really uh, track or control a, uh, a, free, a structural frequency beyond 10 Hertz. They would just be too fast for, um, for, for these, for the control system. And that's why I limited the reduced order model to a set, the subset of states that the controller is actually able to, to modify or track. Um, and what, what you're seeing here in this plot in the bottom left is a frequency response between the full order model and the reduced order model. Uh, specifically what a frequency response is, I, I don't think I'll have the time to get into, um, but really the important part from this specific plot is that within the frequencies that uh, the, the reduced order model was designed, it accurately replicates the full order model. And that's really important because now we can use the reduced order model as a surrogate or essentially a substitute for the full order model. Because it has lower states, it's uh, lower dimensionality, it really improves the efficiency of our calculations. And in some cases just makes them possible where they otherwise wouldn't be. Um, but again, for anyone that finds this topic interesting, um, I really encourage you to maybe outside of this presentation, look into uh, a frequency response, um, Bode plots, that kind of stuff. That's, that's essentially what's going on here. So then uh, now that the, there's a, a model has enabled the controller's design, um, I spoke to Professor Sesnick about the, uh, how he wants this plane to, uh, to behave in the wind tunnel, essentially how he plans to test it. And I uh, came up with these five design requirements for the controller. So the first three are, are in the time domain. Um, the first, over an overdamped step response, that's 
to try and achieve a very smooth and uh, a light transition between the initial pitch and the final pitch. Um, when we're when I'm making a design under a linear model, I, I think that is helpful. Um, and the set, the last two are design requirements in the frequency domain, which gets back a little bit to the the frequency, the Bode plot that uh, I showed you just a minute ago. So. Um, with these design requirements, I used a PID tuner function in MATLAB to essentially uh, determine the, to simulate the step response of the controller with the reduced order models uh, aircraft dynamics. And I, I tuned the controller's bandwidth to achieve the step response that I, I would, that would meet our design requirements and also, um, you know, qualitatively met um, what what I was looking for in a controller. Um, there were there were some con I'd say there were some uh, compromises I had to make. So I think you can tell that there is a pretty uh, quick or steep oscillation in the pitch here. Right initially, um, I found that increasing the bandwidth of the controller would um, make it uh, faster, but decreasing the bandwidth would uh, introduce these, these oscillations. And so um, this, is, this controller here is a balance of controller speed and also the oscillation in, in, the, uh, in the controller. So for the remainder of this project, I used a uh, 0.16 Hertz controller. Now going on to linear simulation. So the, the plots I just showed you in, in the second section are all at 25 meters a second. And, um, Professor Snezik is interested in running these, this controller between a, a, a range of 20 to 30 meters a second. I had to, before I even think about nonlinear simulation, start in the linear domain and uh, simulate the controller's step response uh, in, in a very similar way as to what was done with the PID tuner um, through the range of 20 to 30 meters per second. And as a bonus, I ensured I, I added the full order model to the simulation to check whether the full order model and the reduced order model were accurate, uh, essentially, you know, coincident uh, through this flights through, through through this flight range. Um, and the important takeaway here is that yes, the controller is stable throughout this throughout um, twenty to thirty meters per second, which I think is pretty cool because we designed this at twenty five meters a second. Yet the controller is still stable, you know, five meters a second faster and slower. Um, that's kind of cool. And so, also the the full order model is again uh, um, able to accurately represent the uh, full order model at, at each flight speed. And so given the positive results I saw in linear simulation, I continued on to nonlinear simulation. And this is where I really interact with a, uh, a heavy nonlinear simulator that the lab has. Um, it's pretty time consuming uh, to submit jobs to this, to this simulator, um, but it's the most accurate representation of the, the aircraft's dynamics that, that I can get uh, without actually like going in the tunnel. Um, and what's, what's, I guess, kind of makes, made me a little nervous before entering this step is that all, these, the, all this design had been made on, you know, designed for the controller, had been made under a linear assumption. Um, and now I was removing that, going to a nonlinear uh, simulation, and I wasn't sure how the controller would respond. For example, this really, quick uh, increase in pitch followed by a sharp decrease represents a pretty high rate of acceleration in the pitch. And sometimes linear models aren't really able to capture um, the behavior of high accelerations in a nonlinear model. So there, there was some concern that there would be, um, or at least for me, uh, that, that, these, that the controller would not necessarily be stable. And I did find that the, um, controller did, its trajectory did look a bit different. So um, I guess this is hard, I have to really zoom in here. Um, this is all at 20 meters a second. So I couldn't fit all my results on the poster, but at 20 meters a second, varying the initial condition, uh, in keeping the final reference pitch constant, um, the pitch trajectory is stable. And um, I, I know I only included positive initial conditions here, um, but, um, even in the negative, negative initial conditions and also at different flight speeds, the controller was still stable, um, demonstrating a basically a very similar um, 
uh, pitch trajectory, which was a, a positive sign. Um, so really this was the, the final step in my, my validation of this controller. And it was reason for me to, uh, to uh, submit this controller to Professor Sesnick for, for um, implementation on the, on, on the uh, aircraft. Um, but I, I'll, just to close everything out, um, I'd really like to thank Professor Sesnick and um, Mateus, who is a, a PhD candidate currently. I, I interacted with them uh, routinely for this project and they provided a lot of guidance and support. Um, I certainly couldn't have accomplished uh, this project without them and I'm very grateful. All right, thank you.